another instalment of Before the Fight. A very exciting show. As usual, I am joined by my co-host, Shotgun Shannon O'Connell. Hey, guys. And uh, Nick Noonan on the show again. Noonan boy, how are you, mate? Good? Mate, good. Good to be back. Another exciting episode today. So, Mate, very wait. big episode. We've got a lot of things to break down. Obviously, the Lomachenko and Lopez fight uh, and the entire undercard. We're going to have a quick run through that. We've got a big fight week coming up with the Tasman fighter card and the Deception Bay fight card. Uh, but we have to start with our very first round and our first guest, which is the head splitter, mm. Isaac Hardman. Mate, how are you? Very good. Couldn't be better. Mate, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. It's been a while trying to get me on, but I'm finally made it over. And it's a pleasure. Thanks for giving me the platform. Mate, you're a legend. Now, um, we're going to start straight off. Australian title, Taj Singh. I'm going to smash him. Um, I just hope he gets there. So uh, that his coach has been calling for me to fight him for ages, and I'm running for him. I did a podcast with Ben Damon at the start of the year. I said I'll finish this year fighting Taj Singh, having that Australian title. Mm -hmm. So um, he's been blowing his horn the whole time, uh, all throughout the year. And now that I've taken the fight, he's gone super quiet. So I just hope he makes it there. Um, it's going to be real satisfying. He's got a little chip on my shoulder with this one, and. Um, the chip on your shoulder that you're referring to, that's the social media blow up that you had with Jerry Murphy? No, nah, just in general, like um, that I don't have a, you know, I'm not a boxer or I don't have the amateur credentials or anything like that. So, um, you know, I feel like I've got something to prove every time I go out and fight and um, that just makes me want to smash these people even more. So um, it's going to be extra satisfying when I get this one done. Mate, lady, I feel shit, like you you've are always a got a chip on your shoulder with whoever you fight. Is that how you get through your fights? Like, I'm just you just have hate, pure hate for the person you're going to fight until, obviously, afterwards. Yeah, it winds me up. Like, you know, these people Motivator. are trying to take my livelihood away, my future, the house I'm trying to build, the, um, you know, my life, my potentially my kids, you know, future as well. So, um, no way is this person going to stand in front of me and stand in front of me and take that away from me. So I go in there with like a vendetta against these people and. That's why I smack these people so hard. Like, and if it was M like MMA days, I used to jump on those people and punch mm. them even more. So, you know, they're lucky they're boxing me. So, so if we use the word hungry, that's an understatement. You're yeah, emotionally driven. Yeah. You carry yeah, your heart absolutely. on your sleeve. Like, You've got a very tough persona, but at the in the end, you're doing it for the grand plan. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I've got a plan, and I'm going to, you know, follow through with it, and I'm going to prove to everyone, not just the people that doubt me, but more importantly, the people that I know. Mm. Um, believe in me as well. I'm going to prove them people right. So, um, mm. you know, yeah. it's going to be he's cut, dangerous. Cut, he's cut dangerous. from a different cloth, this boy, and um, I've been on his bandwagon for how long now? A yeah. while. I've been down with sparring sessions when he's had sparring with certain people and guys come out of the ring going, Noon and Noon. And I said, I told you about this. <laughs> I've told you about this. It's not like I don't have a value opinion. I've seen Errol Spence knock people out in training. I've seen Mayweather train. I've seen Shotgun train. I've seen a lot of good boxers train. This guy's an absolute killer. I think Isaac's got two fights left in Australia um, for him, and then I think he'll go over to, to America and fight on some big cards over there in 2021. Who's the other fight? Uh, E-Man, if he wants to have some, he can get yeah. some as well. Uh, he's the one, there's three people ranked in front of me. Sam Solomon, I think, is retired. He's yeah. at number two. Zaraf is on the bigger and better things. I wouldn't expect him no. to take it. And, you know, I'm not in a position to fight him either. Like, I wouldn't expect that. Well said. Um, there's uh, E-Man and then myself at four. So that's yeah. And then there's Taj, he's ranked in the Indian rankings. But um, E-Man can get it if he wants it as well. Um, but, oh, and... Kamiko, Kamilto can get it as well. I'd love to smash him, but um, that's a you know that's a little have fun fight if I want to have a you know cruisy end of the year somewhere. Some people take it as arrogant, but speaking to him now, Shannon, you can see it comes from a oh, genuine spot. So if maybe a couple of weeks before the last lot of fights, um, he went sparring at Fortitude, and everyone's like, he's actually a really nice guy. And I was like, Great guy. social media. People say I come off as arrogant. It's my confidence. I believe in everything I say. So, um, But then get to know me and shake my hand and have a conversation with me. I'm sure your tune will change. So um, it is what it is. And if that's what sells, you know, I want to I want to put money in the bank. I'm building a house. Um, I want a good life. So... If that's what sells, that's what sells. For the people that don't know what was going on in Townsville, uh, when Zoo came to Queensland, uh, every man, dog and his trainer wanted to get rounds with Tim Zoo. They were fighting over each other, scrambling over each other to get rounds. A very big feather in your cap, mate, is the fact that they would travel two hours at a time to get rounds with you. Yeah, and it is. Um, like you said, everyone was call would have been calling Glenn or getting in contact with that camp to go do rounds with them. They were travelling. 
you know, to and far to get there. So um, Noonan actually gave me the inside scoop they were coming into Brisbane to do their camp here. So um, I sent Glenn a message. They actually wanted me to come down in March when that fight was mm. scheduled. And I was meant to be fighting Copeland that time. Um, we couldn't get away from the gym at a drop of a hat. So we waited. I was coming off a hand injury. So um, it all come full circle. And, you know, Glenn Jennings messaged me on like a Monday. said, can we do 10 rounds tomorrow? And he answered the question for him. So I said, he said, you know, I know you're good for the 10, when can we be there? And he come all the way from the Gold Coast and then he come back four more times. So, um, four more times. Whereas all these other people are, you know, chomping at the bit to, we'll do this, we'll do that, we'll travel here, travel there to go see him. So um, they'll come all the way. Four minute rounds, some of them, 30 second breaks. Mm. Ferocious. Like the sparring they did in round, in the third and fourth time, that was high level shit. Mm. Yeah, it's been good. I've been getting some really high level rounds in and it's just another sort of reminder that I'm on this level. Um, I've done rounds with the likes of Clay Waterman, Paulo Asuko, um, Tim Zhu, all the uh, um, Ashley Timmons over at Fortitude as well. So there's a lot of rounds to be done, and um, it's just constant reminders that I can do this, and I'm going all the way. If you're not out there doing the work and you don't have the right team behind you, you're going to start finding yourself falling behind. And this is obviously why not only you're making waves, but the results are coming in the way they are. Like mm -hmm. Jamie Weech, great guy, well-credentialed little fighter. Done. Out quick. Dead. Yeah, quick. This is why he's making waves, yeah? Yeah, 100%. 100%. And uh, he's going to continue on, but I just think his style, his persona, it's, um, it's America for him. There is nobody, I believe, in Australia, other than Steve, sorry, Steve. Hey, Steve. Um, that knows boxing as well as Stuart Duncan. Mm. Stuart Duncan stepped Jeff up perfectly, mm. and he will do the same. He, he gets the right challenges. He gets he he studies fighters like no no tomorrow. Like he gets he knows every fight that Jeff fought. He knew it was slightly different, and it was a, a it was a step up, but it was a winnable challenge, and he'll do the same. Mm. Which leads us to the positive points of being signed with DNL, mate. For sure, yeah, four fights a year. I've got a good. Good contract and um, gives me that platform to fight uh, on live, t live TV, Foxtel, and pay per view. So, um, and I've, I've got to stay busy as well. It's in my contract that I fight four times a year. So, um, you know, DNL's the biggest promotion here in Australia at the moment. It's got the best stable. So, um, they're running the best show. So, I'm glad to be a part of it. And like Shannon said, um, Stuart Duncan's the matchmaker. Uh, he's going to step me up. I didn't even. I won't even mind if he doesn't step me up. Throw me in there, and I'm ready to fight. Let's go. I'm a professional fighter, and um, that's the way I hold myself. And I know the business side of uh, boxing. You got to um, you got to speak your mind, or not even your mind, but you got to be vocal. Otherwise, you don't get a shot. There's so it many good boxers out right? there. Yeah, you got to make noise, whether it's good or bad. Um, otherwise, you're not getting paid. And I mean, this this sport is so volatile, and it, it owes me nothing. It owes no one nothing. Like. Um, you know, mm. it'll spit you up and chew you out if you let it. So I'm going to drain it for every little bit I can, and then I'm getting out. So um, I know I can be great in this sport, and I know I can go on to win world titles and make a lot of money and a good life, but um, it doesn't care about me like I care about boxing. So And uh, that's just the fact. That's the nature of the beast. So um, I'm in and out and having fun while I'm doing it. Mate, you're known uh, for making the odd prediction about how the fights are going to go? Yep. Yep. How's it going to go with Taj Singh? Oh, I think he holds on to me for like four rounds. Nah. And you know, if he walks up to me like he normally does, oh, it's going to change real quick because when I punch these people, they stop walking up. Like I said, Jamie said he was going to walk me down and he found himself flat on his face. So if Taj tries to walk me down, he's going to again find himself laying on his back or face down. Um, I'll get him out max for oh, five rounds. I feel sorry for Taj. Then. Yeah. 72 and a half, so I'm massive then. I don't even think Taj... His skill set is not there like mine is. He's tough and durable, and he's a southpaw. I've fought, fought plenty of southpaws South and knocked East. them all out. Um, so if he's banging on me being uncomfortable with a southpaw, um, him out wrestling me like he does a lot of holding, I, I'm a wrestler. <laughs> I can't wait to get in there with Taj. It's going to be super satisfying, and oh, I can't wait to bounce my gloves off his head. It's going to be really satisfying. I'm it, taking that chip in with me, so um, it's going to be. I've got a real vendetta against that team, so. Um, a lot of fury. It's personal. Is there anyone else that you wanted to shout out to? Just my sponsors, Blair, of course, and Nitro Boxing. My sponsors, France Hydroponics, Universal Civil Contracting, uh, Roadie Meats, uh, Rip It Up Flooring, and Webcon. So um, I might as, um, car service and also come on board as well, Ben Neighbour at um, Newmarket and Newstead. So um, this team, like I said, a lot of work and moving parts, and I'm thankful. Mate, thanks for being on the couch. You're doing really great things. Thanks for having me, guys. I appreciate it. I'm Jess Cashman, and you're watching Before the Fight.
I'm Ellie Bliss Reynolds. You're watching Before the Flight. Round two, we get started. Ben Kelleher. Massive fight. Biggest fight of your career. A rematch. Yeah. Jai Pattaya. Tasman fight cards. You've come straight out of training this morning to be on the couch. We can't thank you enough. That's okay. Thank you. Bring us into your life. How are you feeling? I feel awesome. Um, I'm trying to enjoy the process and enjoy the journey as much as I can. I think I mentioned last time, like, you you move from fight to fight in, early on in your career where you just sort of look past the, the fun stuff, the opportunities to do things like this, and you just sort of go through the motions and then um, well, they're saying you don't sort of stop and smell the roses, but I'm doing that this time, so it's, it's fun for me this time. Noonan, I've watched the fight twice, the mm -hmm. previous fight between uh, Jai and Ben. You've seen it. Your mm. thoughts? Oh, just how tough he is, how he hung in there, you know what I mean, with one hand, you know what I mean, was was unbelievable and very strong. Um, like I said about before, I think Jai, for this fight, Jai will be a lot more improved. But, you know what I mean, I think, I think Ben will as well. So it means for a great fight. And, and you were just saying before, you've actually watched the fight for the first time? Yeah, uh, I did an interview for Tasman Fighters the other day and they wanted my reaction to what happened to my hand. So it was the first time I watched it because it was a difficult experience for me. Mm -hmm. um, so I, didn't, I can't be bothered going back and reliving it. Did you see some positives in that fight? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's, a, it's a real honor to have, have that stage, I think. Like to, that was on Fox Sports as well. Yeah, well. I was thinking about the other day how so many people go, th and Shannon, you'll attest to this, there's so many people that sort of go through their career. They do not get an opportunity to even be on that sort of platform. Before we go into the fight too much, something I do want to touch on that people might not know about is the camp that you're in, um, Curtis fought Jai, mm. uh, you fought Jai, yep. and you're friends with Mark Bam Bam Flanagan. <laughs> and Kyle, Kyle Brumby, my other And Kyle Brumby, Brumby. that's right. Yeah. Um, has it been hard to m keep this not being a personal fight? Nah. I, I think, and I've said this to you last time, so I hate to repeat myself, but the younger Ben that sat here would have been like, yeah, this is personal. This is just... Another fight. I said to Shannon before we started, this is just another fight. Another fight. It's, um, it's a personal thing in that this has been great growth for me. Like, I have had a good time in this camp. Uh, a lot of my other life happenings have been really positive because of my being fit, being strong, being disciplined, um, which I also mentioned before. So, you know, nothing personal with Jai. He's going to be a great champion regardless of the outcome of our fight. Mm. You only need to look at the way he's handled by his team and how he is as a, as a man. He has self-belief, you know? So he'll go on to do great things, but on the night, it's I'm doing it for me, you know, and for my own, uh, to be proud of myself, not because I care about him or his team or what he's doing. You know, it's just a very separate thing for me now. Mm. Jeez, you are just that. zen on the couch, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, isn't he? What, yeah, like, sure. and well received? Awesome. How well received yeah. was he from yeah, the sure. first one we had him on? Yeah, I was just saying before I had um, some people from the amateurs. Like J two <laughs> came up to me and he said, like, what, how good what we're doing is, and and he said Ben Kelleher, like, like listening to him talk, he, it was just like wow, like no one knew anything about you, mm. and he, and you just your mind, your, your head space, and it's. It's impressive. Yeah, I'm very, very lucky impressive. though because I think, um, you know, um, I'd never have the opportunity to be someone in the sp in the spotlight or on the the media stuff like this in my previous fights, even if I have been um, the main attraction. Um, so this is something that you kind of can sort of relish and enjoy, you know. So it's cool for me as well. The Tasman fighting card is enormous. Great. Mick Francis and the crew have done great work yeah, to yeah. put on an amazing fight card. Shout out. To you know, not just your fight alone, but the excitement you must feel to be on this card with all these other great fights. It's sort of annoying because I would love to be sitting and enjoying a beer watching Justice and Django. We've been seeing your strength and conditioning. We've been seeing you throw some bombs into the bag. Yeah. Okay, but when we get down to the nitty gritty, how's it changed? Uh, well, I think just like I said, my, where my head is at, this is, um, this is something that I've, I've enjoyed. I'm, I'm grateful to Mick and the Tasman Fighters people for allowing me the opportunity to fight Jai. But um, that doesn't take away from the fact that uh, I'm, I'm certainly no step, stepping stone for him and I'm not nobody's warm-up. Um, so when I have the actual fight, I'm similar to the first time, I'm not going down without going out on my sword. I'd, I'd much prefer to go out on my sword than... Uh, 
fight to survive, you know? Yeah, I think, um, you know, Jai obviously also wants, has a point to prove because he believes that if hand injury or not, it was gone one way. Yes. So I, I hats off to him because he's got a point to prove, but you've also got a point to prove. I think it makes for a great fight. I think this is just going to be an absolute cracker of a fight and it's great to see this, you know, you know legend of a guy that, and you know, showcase, you know, they, they're the main event. What do you got to do to beat him? Without giving too much away, what do you have to do? Oh, I don't think it's any secret. If I don't put pressure on Jai and if I don't implement what I want to do, then I'm just going to be a punching bag for 10 rounds and I have no um, desire to be that. So, you know, just make sure that I'm fit enough on the evening, which I am, to, uh, to put pressure on Jai and, and test him as best I can. I saw a lot of things in the fight uh, against Mark, which I was lucky enough to be at, mm -hmm. that I feel uh, if I can make some small adjustments might make it harder for him. But, um, I, yeah, like I said, he wants to cement his legacy in Australian boxing before he heads overseas, I'm pretty sure. Mm. That would mean um, a convincing win over me. For me, it's uh, making sure that I know for myself I'm certainly not afraid of a fight with one of the best. Um, and in my own legacy, I, I don't want to go out having uh, that injury have an asterisk next to what happened for us. So to put myself against the, the best in the country, I believe, makes me uh, quite proud of myself and um, the game plan is, is quite simply just to fight my fight as opposed to allow for Jai to, to fight his. Mate, shout out to some of the people that have been giving you some support. Uh, well first, yeah, thank you to Angelo Di Carlo Ace Boxing. Um, obviously he, he really helps me in, in finding these sorts of fights. He's the one that rang me and said, would you like to fight Jai? I said 100%. Uh, obviously Mick and the team at Tasman Fighters for allowing me the platform. I've said that to him already. Uh, and just my team, I, I have so many great people, Curtis, Kyle, you know, my, my members at my gym, Corporate Box East Brisbane, Inspire Health in the West End. I have, um, I'm very lucky to, although not, I don't have a huge following or a huge, um, you know, background in boxing, people still get behind me, so I'm, I'm very grateful for that. To everyone tune in, mm. boxing is back this week in Brisbane, brought to you mm. by Tasman Fighters and DNL Events, live on uh, Fox Sports, starting at 6 p.m., Main event, Ben Callagher versus Jai Pattaya. Tune in. Going to be a huge fight. And again, like I personally think this is one of the best cards that I've seen in Cracking a long time. Cracking card. And all credit due to everyone involved. We wish you safety and success, mate. We're going to let you go now and get ready and put on a show, son. Thank you, sir. Very good. I'm Jai Pattaya, and you're watching Before the Fight. My name is Whangau Pelu, a.k.a. Django. You're watching Before the Fight. Us. All day, us. <laughs> <laughs> Round three, we move straight into Amateur Superstar and doing big things on the social scene. Taylor Robertson, how are you? Yeah, good, thanks. How are you doing? Good. Now, before we kick into the boxing, you're doing some other stuff. Uncharted Waters. Tell us quickly about that. Um, I think I got bored over quarantine and COVID and nothing was really happening in the boxing world, so I just started doing some sports crossovers with... Other, other different sports. So who have you done so far? We've seen Quade Cooper in photos. Yeah, I did Quade Cooper. So we did the Union and then we did some um, cliff diving with Xanthia Pen Pen Penisi. Yep. Um, and then we did bodybuilding with Jackson Johnson. And where can we see this being streamed? Um, my Instagram is my main <laughs> platform. Or YouTube, I've just started up on YouTube posting because you can post longer videos on YouTube. I'm a big fan, love it. Need to check it out on Chota Waters. Tell us all about Project 180 as well because that's obviously something that you're obviously very yeah. passionate about. Was um, I think Shannon's worked with Glenn in the past. Yeah. He was telling me, and um, yeah, I think it's just the mindset of the mindset of Glenn. I really, really think is great, and um, he's help, he's helping me out in a in a way of getting me in there for work. So. I'm working there every morning for two hours at the moment, but he's paying me a full wage to help me get through, um, get through getting in fights and ke keep my training up instead of spursing myself out over all different gyms. Um, so he's doing that and he's trying to get on top of my mindset as well um, in fighting, getting me, getting me in, in a positive mindset all the time. And it's, it's been great atmosphere. <laughs> Mate, that's awesome. Good stuff. Yeah. Now, we ran into you in Townsville for the Zoo Horn fight. And we touched base with you very quickly there, and you were talking, yeah, you've, again, 
much like Clay, much like Jack, you've turned pro, you had one, COVID happened. Yeah. Um, you've been struggling to get a fight. There was a mention of calling out Ellie Bliss Reynolds. Yeah. <laughs> you know, how have we progressed from there? Oh, we haven't. <laughs> no, we're still chilling. I'm trying to get some money to back me a little bit, to start offering some more money for opponents. But it's not the easiest either. But I don't know, I've just, I was stressing out a lot about it and getting involved too much and trying to find fights where. I've taken a step back. I'm just going to keep training. Mike, my manager, will do his job, and when a fight comes, it comes. Um, I'll stay ready and and um, keep focused in other aspects of my life and staying happy and keeping fit, really. I think that's probably the best thing you can do uh, at your age, at your stage of your career. Yeah. Shara is well-rounded, experienced. Her and Gareth have been in the game for a long time. Mm. They're very well respected. They, they've Shara's had you for a long time. Yeah. She knows you. Uh, you've gone around the world with her. Yep. Um, you've now taken on Rico, uh, Richard. Yep. Uh, is, is, he's your manager now? Promotional manager. Promotional yep. manager. Yeah. Yeah, so he uh, he brought up Steph Packer in a helicopter yeah, yeah. to Townsville and we caught <laughs> up with him. We were at the airport with him flying out, so he's yeah. a great guy. He seems like he's doing a lot of good moves for you. Yeah. But let's talk about your amateur career now. Let's take it back. Yep. What's the highlight? Um... Probably the Com Games. It's just a good experience to be a part of a multi-sport event, be around all different athletes and see them uh, the way they are and, and the, all the different sports um, and just the atmosphere of everything and being in Australia was awesome. Um, yeah, well, not the result I wanted, but it doesn't, doesn't really matter. It was experience. was worth it. Yeah. So it probably... definitely doesn't define a career. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, like even just making the games, that that there was your win. So um, you know, like a lot of people said, she got a medal. She didn't deserve a medal because she didn't win her fight, but she made the games. She just that that, that was her win. So mm. yeah. How have you seen yourself grow as an individual over the last couple of years? We've seen your development uh, on social media. We've seen you on the world stage. But you, as a human, how have you seen yourself develop over the last couple of years? Um, I think I've definitely grown up a lot. I think when I first made the Com Games team, I was just excited to be boxing full time at the time because I went from school to work straight into Canberra at the AAS. I just wanted to be a part of it all with all the girls and just thought it was fun travelling on the plane with everyone and rocking up at hotels for tournaments. Um, that sort of kind of got too involved in being a part of that instead of just like having my own life and doing my own things outside of boxing, not just outside of boxing, but even being my own person as such. As you say, like I was hanging out with Sky all the time. I was never really, or Kay or Caitlin, and I was never yeah. being my own person. And um, I think over the last year or two, I've really, definitely, really become that a lot more. This speaks volumes for how much you've grown up over the years. Yeah. I mean, you've obviously done a lot of inner work to make these big decisions. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I've been making sure, like, if things come up, I can go, well, I can make training a little bit earlier so I can go if it's we have a family event or something like that, I'll go to it or even if my friends it's their birthday, I'll I'll go. I don't have to drink, I'll go still. Like mm. I can still I can still have fun and, and be around people and keeps keeps my brain active and feel refreshed and I don't feel like I'm depriving myself of so many things like I was in the amateurs. Mm. Mm. A lot of sacrifice to be, you know, to be, to to be in that upper echelon of the Commonwealth Games and representing your country. Yeah. Uh, you know, and it's something you, that they demand of you, and you have to demand of yourself. Yeah. To be at that high level. Yeah. So at your age, for doing that, I take my hat off to anybody at that age that goes out there and does it. And a lot of these young fighters with big amateur careers, like that Clay Waterman was talking about it, you know, and and professional fighters as well. There's sometimes you just want to walk away from the sport, but you ask yourself that question. And that answer always brings you back. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Have you seen her come up through the ranks as a young female fighter? Oh, the same. Like, literally what she's just said is what you can see. Like, mm. um, and, and I know myself, like, amateur boxing is so demanding. I mean, mm. j on your life. Like, you know, there could be a tournament this weekend, and if you win, you go to Europe on Monday. Yeah. Mm. If you don't win, you're back home. Like, like <laughs> and, and you've got to go to that like tournament that. with your bags packed to go away for a month. Um, professional boxing is a lot more demanding, I think, um, physically and mentally, but not on your life. Um, yeah. You know, you, you you do training camps, your fights are scheduled. You're not you're not living day to day. And um, hearing that has made is brought back for me because that was the reason I 
gave up the amateurs. Um, but yeah, it's 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 good to see that people are taking that step away from it and making their own lives happy because I started hating boxing as well. What are some fights that could be around for this girl? <laughs> Ellie. Hmm. They're, they're crazy not to take it. Yeah. They've, they've got no other option. There's plenty mm. of fire cards before the end of the December year. December the third, another one. Plenty. One in plenty. Canberra too. Yeah. Plenty. So that Ellie Bliss Reynolds fight could come off. Have you I moved so. with her before? Oh yeah, I did. When I was deciding to turn pro in November, after I come back from the World Championships last year, I was still with Mark Evans. She came up, and I, I moved around with her. Yeah. Could happen in Canberra or could happen up here? Oh, yeah. It could happen up here. It'd be great, wouldn't it? What's the Canberra card? Uh, Canberra cards on November the 25th. Not Brock Jarvis. Mark Schlebs. Mark Schlebs. Big mm. fight. Big, big for Brock, showcasing a main event. Do you so. have to quarantine over there? No, nah, not Canberra's for Canberra, good. you don't know. And can you come back? Yeah. yeah. By plane. Canberra's mm. really good. By plane. In and out. No quarantine required. So. Straight up. That, just, that, 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 that was last week. Wasn't it? Mm, ready to go. Look at her. Yeah. Look at her. She started getting fired let's up get already. Let's, let's get this Char happening. Char yeah. Can't worry. Yeah. Right, Char, let's go. Yeah. 100%. 100%. Ellie Booth Reynolds, let's do this. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be a good one. It'd be a cracker. You've gone all around the world with Shara. Yeah, I've been in a lot of countries together. <laughs> yeah. Um, how important is to have her in your corner? I mean, it's good. I think um, she she's really good because she can tell, like, if I'm not if like, I'm not feeling stuff in the gym or if I have things in my personal life going on, she's just great to talk to. She's like a real motherly kind of figure as well as a coach. She's also a hard ass her. She's straight one to pull you up on things. Um, and I guess I trust in what she says. Like I think her tactics are good. I think she's a technical coach as well. I really like that she can sort of, and I think she's hard, stern on keeping you physically trained. Um, but my main reason was to go with Shara. And even G and stuff was because they didn't want to stop learning. I wanted to keep. I always want to be learning. And um, even being overseas there in the corner, I'd always every day on pads, she'd always be teaching me different things. I'm like, oh, my light bulb goes off. Yeah, that's true. And I didn't want to be with a coach where I just got in the, into just the groove of hitting the bag harder or faster. I wanted to be constantly developing my skill set as well. I, don't, I think I've always. I'm never going to stop learning in boxing. Just even if it's watching the other fighters. I think you can always learn, mm. no matter how good you are. <laughs> always evolving, always learning. And shout out to Shara for one of the very few female trainers that we have 100%. in the country. She has carved herself out some, you know, great fighters and a great little stable. Yeah, you know, yeah. So definitely. all credit to her as well, you know. Yeah. And yeah, you know, obviously with G and the boxing shop, great people down there. Yeah, awesome, mm. awesome gym. <laughs> mm. Now, do you want to shout out to some, you know, a few people that are giving you a bit of support and helping you out? Um, it's my family and my team. All my team around me, the gym, Rico, Mike, MTK, and all my family, yeah. How good is it to be with MTK? Yeah, it's good, it's good. I mean, it's been a struggle being in Australia with COVID, yeah. but, um, I mean, when we break through COVID, I was speaking to Mike, and he, he's saying it's um, looking pretty good for me right now to be on the Fury card next year. So, Whoa. Yeah, so yeah. he's, he's with, said, yeah, I asked know. him, I was like, oh, you're not... You're not talking smack. No. Like, I, uh, I confer and I said, I don't want to say that, and then it's no. just not real. He's like, absolutely correct. You can say that. I've like, heard okay, that cool. from another source too. Well, I heard it from Tad, but from another source too. So obviously yeah. they're working in right as we speak now, actually the next three yeah. days, to work in Fury's opponent. And then once they get that, that fight will be in the UK. Yeah. So it looks like top rank and that aren't going to do it in, in back in America. Fury will do it over there because Deontay Wilder will not be taking that fight yeah. with Fury in the three people. So there's no it's confirmation on the Definitely date or happening. who, but once that's confirmed, they said MTK will be promote, promoting or something to do with the card and they'll put me up on it. So I mean, finally they're going to pay off over here. <laughs> Mm. Mm. I think we're really yeah, showing everyone in a better light, and that's great to see, mate. Keep doing well. Keep working at your craft. Yeah. And let's hopefully get that Ellie Bliss Reynolds fight. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Ellie, we're going to have to get you on the couch. We're going to have to get <laughs> you on the couch. It. Talk to you about this fight, Ellie. We're going to get you on the couch. I'm Andrew Maloney, and you're watching Before the Fight. I'm Jason Maloney, and you're watching Before the Fight. Big fight week coming up, guys. We've got the Tasman fighter card and the Deception Bay fighter card. Let's move into the Tasman fighter card. We've had a lot of the, uh, the boys on the couch. Uh, talking about their upcoming fights. Kelleher, Opatire. Nick. Tough fight. Bit of redemption for Kelleher. Um, I still see Jai being too good for that. Um, look, it, it, it's it's going to be a step up back again for Kelleher. Like, he's got to go in with another really, really tough fighter. 
Um, but Jai just leaps and bounds at the moment. Jai's something special. He's, yeah. he's, I loved meeting Ben and, and hearing his mindset was, was amazing, but I just don't think that... I think Jai's just too skilled. Justice Django. Ooh. Shannon. Oh, as, don't put us on the don't spot. Don't put me there. Have to. Have Look, to. Django is on fire. I've never, I've I've never seen him like the way he is. Justice is a freak. I think on the night it comes down to man versus kid. Is, is Justice a man yet? We're going to find out. We're going to find a lot out about Justice this week. It's fight week, professional fight week, from media to the weigh-in. Um, you know, fighting professionally is a lot different to fighting, obviously, in the amateurs. And uh, from what I'm hearing, Django is on absolute fire. Django is tough. He's been doing some sparring with Jai, the stuff he's been doing at Fortitude. Who knows? It could be a big upset. But this is the thing. We're all thinking, and, you know, I don't know what the book is thinking, that Justice is going to win this fight. No, no, this is a very even fight. Now, if Django does win the fight, you know what I mean, the people that really know boxing aren't going to be surprised. The two bands, Marnie, Hussein. I'm, again, boy versus oh. man. Yeah. I just, that's, that's, what's, that's what it's going to come down to. We had Ben Marnie on the podcast this week. Fantastic episode. And he's uh, very, very driven to make a statement on Thursday he's night. He's tough. And he's so tough. Mm. And I mean, he's done some tough rounds of Isaac Harman recently. I think he's going to... Look, Shannon, another good point. You know, two and zero versus a guy that's nine and zero. Mm. Ben Hussain had a good amateur career. You know, get that. Two, two fights where he's had two easy wins. You're not going to get that against Ben Marnie. This is an eight-round fight. This is not a six-round fight. Have you gone four rounds? Have you gone five? Have you gone six? Are you going to have the fitness between rounds six and eight to hang with Ben Marnie? Because Ben Marnie could take you into deep waters. Yeah. Miles Zalewski, Kyle Freiberg. Another tough fight. Another tough fight. We'll find out how good Miles Zalewski is. But, you know what I mean? Kyle Freiberg, you know what I mean? Is he ready for the fight at this weight too? You know, you've got to have a look at that. But uh, I can't pick a winner in that fight. That, that's the one that I really struggle with on that card. Mm. Fraz used to beat me up when he was 12. Really? <laughs> and oh. then he just got too big for me. But, he, well, not too big. He's never too big. He's probably still smaller than me. But, no, I don't know. I just... It's, it's weird what thinking Miles and Frazzy, like Frazzy's so little and yeah. there, there's going to be a bit of size difference. Mm. Dane all day, Mullaby, the oh. weapon, Clay Waterman. Oh, <sighs> I think, I think. That's a mismatch. Yeah, because I think Clay wins that. Yeah. Dane's been out for too long. I mean, no one, you can't take anything away from him, but. Good on Dane for taking the yeah. fight. Yeah. Moving to the Deception Bay uh, fight card. Waylon Law's got a warm-up fight before he fights Justin Frost for the Australian title again against U10, uh, who Nathan Webber handled, you would say, reasonably easy at the Ace Boxing Promotions card. But, uh, again, a, a journeyman that's tough, walks forward and, um, you know, is hard to put away. Ethan Law, who I have big raps on, uh, we thought was going to be fighting Ezra James. He has now got Japs 4X. It didn't work out exactly the way the boys wanted to. A fight's a fight in COVID if you're talking to Tony Tolge. Mm. Uh, but look, a great little card. Now, Lomachenko Lopez. Uh, I had only one round difference. What did you have the fight, Rob Shaw? I had, uh, obviously he gave, or I thought, not obviously at all, I thought Lomachenko gave Lopez way too much respect for the first six rounds mm. and handed them over. I had 7, 8, 9, 10 and 11 going to Lomachenko and 12 going back to Lopez. To Lopez. Yep, I had it 8, 4 to Lopez and I have Lomachenko's team with the wrong strategy. You don't do that in a fight against a guy like that with, with Lopez. So obviously... And this is when you, when you haven't fought at this level or even fought at certain levels, it's easy to, you know, commentate it from your couch. But um, they were weary of Lopez's power early in that fight. Now, Lomachenko, I thought, probably would give away the first two or three rounds. Mm -hmm. Mate, you gave away the first six. Not the heaviest-handed punch of Lomachenko. Probably, OK, we'll give it 5-1. 5-1 heading into the second half of the fight. No, 6. I'll, I'm with you on 6. Yeah, 6. OK. I'm with you on 6. 
Well, I gave it probably 5-1-6. Then you're going up against the young, hungry lion, and you're going to try and now knock him out now in I've the got ladder. Now six rounds worth of confidence in, in him. Yes, it, perfect point. All this confidence, and now you're going to try and take this young, hungry lion who's up in the fight in the deep waters and knock him out? Mm. No, nah, bad strategy. Great episode of Before the Fight. Thanks again, everybody, and uh, we're looking forward to another big episode next week. I'm Rob Scheif, and you're watching Before the Fight.